Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. <laughs> Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia, is that you? I thought you said you wouldn't be home for hours. Any objection to it being me, Mrs. Brown? Mm, surprise. Well, you don't belong here either. Not for hours. Well, give me my boots and my saddle and goodbye. I'll see you later. <laughs> David, you poo, come back here. <laughs> All is forgiven. Uh, that's better. But seriously, what are you doing home so early? It's only 6.30. Mm, something smells delicious. Well, you said you had a business dinner and meeting and wouldn't be... David, are you listening to me? What are you cooking, Mother? My dinner. Mm, your dinner. Well, mine was called off. Business, too. So I came home to take it advantage of the time and take you and the missus out stepping. Only your missus is out stepping already. Well, bless her little heart. A friend of hers, Helen Drew, is going to be married again, so Claudia was delighted you were busy. You're starting to sound just like Claudia, Mrs. Brown. I don't understand one word you're saying. Oh, of course you do, David. Claudia was delighted you were busy because of the shower. What shower? Helen Drew's. Oh. Claudia went. I hope she wore her raincoat and her rubbers. It wasn't really a shower. Oh, I see. Just a drizzle. Yes, <laughs> more or less. Helen Drew gets married like a woman having babies every now and then, you know. This is the third one. Baby? Husband. No. Oh. That's why I called it a shower. Well, everything is clear now. But it's only an engagement party, and Claudia didn't think you'd want to go. So that's why she was so delighted you were busy. Mm. She went. She wouldn't have gone if you weren't busy. So it worked out fine. Mm -hmm. All right. This is just like talking to Claudia. David, it's simple. The only thing complicated is that your dinner was called off. Well, I am not sorry. Not one bit. But Claudia will be. She will. Certainly, because she went to the party because you weren't... And then you weren't busy after all. Mama, that just doesn't make any sense at all. I'm now, if you're you... hinting my mother-in-law that I should meet her at the party, no. Oh, no, of course not. But she'll be sorry because if you're not busy, she won't think she should have gone. Especially if it's not a good party. Yeah, uh, especially, yes. Oh, well, I hope she's having a good time. But so am I. It's good for her to go to parties once in a while. You know, I sometimes think of living on the farm. She she doesn't get enough of that kind of life. I think she gets as much as she wants, David. <laughs> and she doesn't want very much. Oh, yes, she has very much, and she knows it, or should. Still, occasionally I think that 19 is too young for the life that, that we've chosen to live. On a farm, an hour from New York, a baby to take care of, and mainly a cow and a couple of dogs for company. Maybe Claudia at 19 is too young, David, but I don't think so. But not for the life you live with a baby or the farm. Maybe it's too young to have been given such a rich slice of life. So much now may leave a little too little to taste later on. Perhaps it's safer to spread the good things thin. If we could only hoard happiness like a squirrel and nut, then dig it out. And then the years are barren. Well, perhaps we can. Perhaps. Don't worry about Claudia, David. Now, that is a fine way for a mother to talk to a son-in-law. I think so. And I also think I'm talking a great deal too much. My lamb chop will be scorched to a cinder by now. Oh, let it burn to the bone. Now, what have you got against my lamb chop? Everything. But mainly Mrs. Brown, because it is an only child. <laughs> This kitchen smoke. <coughs> Just in time. I'll turn it over. <coughs> David! You turned off the gas. No, you don't want to waste the gas, do you? Well, it's only cooked on one side. Tell you what, we'll cook the other side tomorrow. But, but I... No but now. You and I are going out to dinner. You are, maybe, but not I. And why not you? I have my dinner right here, or cooked on one side lamb chop. I'm a very stubborn man, Mrs. Brown. You and I are on the town tonight. I'm a bachelor, and I'm taking you out to dinner. It's very sweet, David, but call up a friend and leave nope, me in peace. No, nope, nothing doing. Now, David, be sensible. It's not often you get an evening off, and even you can pay the bachelor. I advise you make the most of it. Leave this poor old woman alone. Mrs. Brown, what 
poor old woman. This one? No, oh, that one. Well, it so happens that she is the poor old woman that I love. Now, put on your bonnet, Mama, and let's go. No, you don't have to do this. And I wouldn't if I had to. Come on, come on, last oh. call. Well, you're nothing but an idiot. But you're the only son-in-law for me. Mm-hmm. I'm the only one you'll ever have, I hope. So it's a good thing you don't mind. Now, to dinner and dancing and then to a nightclub. How's that? David, I'm not 20. And you're not 120 either, so come on, put on your dancing oh, shoes. Oh, I haven't had them on for years. Then we'll dance without them. Well, I'll have to change into something else, but I won't be long. Uh, what time did Claudia say she'd be home? Not too late, she Good. said. Good. Then we'll have all evening. And we'll go round and round and round. Dee 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 bum bum bee dee 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 bum 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 Disappointed I'm back so early, but I... Hey, Mama. Nobody here. Hmm. You in the bedroom, maybe? Listen, if you are, what are you doing going to sleep so early? It's only 10 o'clock. You have no right. 10 o'clock is too early to... Nobody here either. Well, that is funny. Oh, oh. Oh. You silly parrot. You scared the life out of me, you dope. Solomon, listen, where did Mama go? Oh, why can't you talk like a human being? Oh, is that all you have to say? Well, you're no help. Well, I guess I'll get something to eat. And don't try to make up to me with that sweet talk now. Oh, huh. well, here's a lamb chop. Half cooked. Hmm. It's funny. That's Mama's dinner. Well, the fogger, seven, oh, four, three, one. Oh, where, oh, where has my little mouth... Hello, Aunt Louisa? Aunt Louisa's mama there. She isn't. Well, maybe she went to a movie. Oh, well, thanks anyway, Aunt Louisa. See you soon. Goodbye. Hmm, that was a big help. Solomon, tell me, how did Mama look? That's nice. Uh, Murray Hill, four, seven, nine, four, eight. This will do it. Mm-hmm. Hello, Mr. Roger Killian's apartment, please. Mm-hmm. Has my mother gone nowhere? Hello, Roger, this is Claudia. What happened to the meeting you're at? Oh, it was called off and date. No, he's not here. Of course, there's nothing to worry about, Roger. He's only probably out with the blonde. Well, thanks, Roger. I'll see you soon. (sighs) Oh, shut up, Solomon. You're very sweet, but you're only a parrot. And the last thing I need at this moment is a parrot. (laughs) I'm dead. I didn't know there was so much life in you, Mama. (laughs) Mama! David, that you? Now, don't tell me you're home already. All right, I won't tell you. See for yourself. David, come in here. You won't believe your eyes. Oh, I haven't believed my ears already. Hello, darling. Don't darling me. I've been home for hours. Oh, it's not even ten o'clock. Worried to death where you've been? Mm, We've been out, Mama and I. Mm. You don't say. And I suppose either of you two hoodlums thought of leaving me a note saying you were out. Well, where did you think we'd be if we weren't at home? Called Roger. He said the meeting was called off. My Aunt Louisa said you'd left, and then I found one chop cooked on only one side, so I... So, so you worried. Well, wouldn't you have? Over a chop cooked only on one side? Well, I might have. Well, what happened to your party? I left it. Hmm? No? No, too many people. I was lonesome. Hmm. Where were you? Your David insisted on taking me out to dinner. Oh, darling, you, you should have seen Mama doing the rum. Oh, I don't believe a word oh, he said. Oh, she was superb. Such rhythm, such lightness of foot. <laughs> we danced. One waltz. Then you should have seen her, darling. Mm, I can see her now. Mama, I haven't seen your cheeks so pink or your eyes so bright since the day I was born. And it's very becoming. 
Say, maybe you aren't as old as you feel, Oh, no, you hush up, you two. Stop trying to make me self-conscious. <laughs> now, this is no time to start acting modest, Mama, after you've been doing the town with a handsome young man. And Thank he you. is handsome. Welcome. Thank you. I imagine everyone suspected I was out with a gigolo. Or else, what would I be doing with him? Now you're fishing, Mrs. Brown. Oh, I dare say, in my time. Your father was a very handsome man, too, Claudia. Mm. Runs in the women in our family. We pick handsome men. What'd you eat? I ate too extravagantly. I didn't ask you what it cost. I asked you what it was. Duck with apple stuffing. Mm. To look at the prices, you'd think it was stuffed with diamonds. Yeah, like daughter, like mother. All I had were some of those black, fishy canapes. Could there have been caviar by the chance? I hate caviar. Now, nobody is supposed to hate caviar. Well, I do. It tastes like fish that isn't good enough to eat. Yeah, that's my girl. Hates caviar, thinks mink looks cheap, and is never thirsty enough to drink champagne. What's wrong with that? It is not normal. Who wants to be normal? What else do you eat, Mama? Isn't that enough? Oh, I'm exhausted. I'm going to collapse in bed. Hey, listen, you you can't go off just like that. Who's going to stop me? We want to talk. Come oh, on back. Oh, you talk to each other. I have the strength to listen. Put out the lights before you go to bed. But, Mommy... Well, just like that. Oh, David. Yes, Mother. I did have a lovely time. Good night. Good night, Mother. You know... A stranger would think you were in love with that woman. Oh, I would be if it weren't for 20 years. What, 20 years? If I were 20 years older or Mama was 20 years younger. Glad you're not. So am I. Because as it is, I had to settle for second best. And second best is good enough for me. Mr. Norton, you are certainly courting the ladies tonight. Yep. Do you mind? I don't even mind being second best. But only to Mama. Now, come here. Sit on my lap and tell me about your evening. And to watch my doodles party. She certainly got gypped, Who? didn't she? What you call it? Heavens no, Mama. There was so much of her life left over after my father died. Now, what, um, what about your party? Oh, David, I've had the most wonderful evening. Wonderful? I, I thought you said that it was dull and that you came home early and... No, you don't understand, David. It, it's not every girl who has a husband who loves her second best to her mother. Mama's eyes were so bright. Thank you, darling, for everything. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Someone has said that the great secret of successful parenthood is to put yourself in the child's place. Mothers who do that often let teenagers run their own parties, or they know that entertaining is more fun for youngsters when things are done their way instead of mom's. The young hosts get a case of Coke, turn on the phonograph, pick up the rugs, and a party is on. Where there's Coke, there's sociability, the wholesome kind, the kind parents approve of. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. (laughs) 